The light and frost effect. Does it truly make your stainless steel pan non-stick? And I also wonder, at what temperature does the light and frost effect actually happen? And is it ideal for whatever it is that you're trying to cook? Because not everything cooks at those high temperatures. There's a lot of folks on the internet that will tell you that in order to make your stainless steel pan non-stick, all you gotta do is bring it up to the light and frost effect. And somehow the light and frost effect is this magical thing that makes stainless steel pans non-stick. It's not entirely true. That's what I wanna talk about today because I think the internet has a lot of misinformation when it comes to making your stainless steel non-stick and the light and frost effect. So what exactly is the light and frost effect? Well, it's this very cool scientific phenomena that basically allows liquid water meets a very hot surface. And I'm talking about a very hot surface. And what ends up happening is that liquid water begins to vaporize at contact with the very hot surface. And then the liquid water will float on top of that gas in this very, very cool effect. And today we're gonna to find out at what temperatures does it actually happen at. Scientifically, it should be happening around 392 degrees Fahrenheit or about 200 degrees Celsius. From my experience, it usually starts around 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So give or take, I'm expecting it to start happening around 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You do need a very flat surface, a very smooth surface for it to work properly because the liquid water and the vapor water can be interrupted with basically anything and it will ruin the experiment or ruin the effect. So if your pan's dirty, for example, or you have seasoning, or maybe you're using a cast iron pan that's not smooth, like a large cast iron pan, it will interrupt the light and frost effect. In order to be accurate with this experiment, I'm gonna need some sort of measuring device a device that can measure flat surfaces, a thermometer that can measure flat surfaces. There's a really cool thermal pin out there that's made by Thermoworks that actually has an adapted tip that will allow you to measure flat surfaces. I used to have one a long time ago and I don't know what happened to it. I probably forgot it somewhere. It's long gone and someone else probably picked it up and is using it now. Give it back to me. <laughs> but. Um, I think they're around like 150 bucks, 200 bucks if memory serves me right. It might be like 200 with shipping and tax and all that. Um, and that's quite expensive for most of you out there. I realize that. So instead, I was looking through my drawer and I actually found one of my old grill grate thermometers. These work really well. They're very cheap. I think this one's under 15 bucks. It might be like 10 bucks, something like that. Really large dial. And you can measure the surface of your barbecue at the grill grates in order to be more accurate with your barbecuing experience. The problem with this one though is it's not flush, it's not flat. It has a bit of a ridge, so it's not actually flush with the surface. It's perfect for grill grates, which it was designed to do, but it's not flush with the surface, so you end up having a little pocket of air underneath, and I found that it's probably 10 to maybe even as much as 20 degrees under the temperatures that it's supposed to be measuring at. Uh, went on the internet, found another one, another surface thermometer that is NSF certified. This one goes up to 600 degrees, which is plenty. And it has a flat surface. Again, you can find this for about 10 bucks. Now, these aren't instant, right? They're not gonna give you instant readings, but for this experiment, and even at home, if you're trying to learn how to preheat your pan properly, it's actually pretty good because if you put it in with your cold pan, and then start heating up your pan, you can watch the temperatures increase along with your pan temperature. So you may not need an instant read for this particular situation. So with all that being said, let's start the experiment. We're gonna fire up the burner and let's figure out at what temperature the light and frost effect actually happens at. So for today's experiment, we're gonna be using my all-clad D3, which is a three-ply stainless steel pan. Basically, it has an aluminum core that's wrapped around stainless steel. And I'm just gonna drop in the thermometer right into the pan, and we're gonna see how the temperature increases along with preheating the pan. And then I'll just start dropping in my water droplets, and we'll figure out exactly when the light and frost effect happens. I suspect it's probably around 400 degrees or so, probably 410, something like that. 
where we get the full light and frost effect. So right around 300 degrees, you can see that the pan is pretty hot at this point, but the water's evaporating almost instantaneously, so we're not at the light and frost effect just quite yet. We're gonna keep going, and as soon as we start seeing those little droplets forming and dancing around the pan, then we know we're getting close to the light and frost effect. Usually what happens is it starts off small and then it starts off bigger, or they'll actually start forming and then they'll just frizz away as they move around. All right, and now, Pan's still not hot enough. They are just evaporating instantaneously. Okay, now we hit about 400 degrees, and yeah, we're starting to see the little little vapor droplets forming and are dancing around, but they're frizzing out. So another five, 10 degrees, and I think we're gonna be right there. And there you have it. It looks like around 425, 430 degrees or so, the light and frost effect is happening, which is roughly about, let's say 200, I don't know, 225 degrees Celsius. I'll put a little thing in the description of this video. And that's when you get the true light and frost effect. So that's really, really high. I mean, if you're cooking up eggs or something delicate, you don't need to be at 430 degrees Fahrenheit to cook up some eggs. You're gonna dial down the temperatures regardless. So let's talk a little bit more about the light and frost effect. Okay, so as expected and as science told us, around 400 degrees Fahrenheit is when the light and frost effect starts to happen. Now, at the exact temperature depends on the pan, your stove, there's a lot of variables that go into play. But for us, with this pan and this burner, it was around 430 degrees, 425 degrees, something like that, where the light and frost effect started to happen. So does the light and frost effect make your pan nonstick? Yes and no. This is my issue with it. It's not gonna magically transform your stainless steel pan into Teflon, right? That's just not going to happen. Stainless steel doesn't work that way. It is teaching you how to properly preheat your pan, but you need to know how to use and understand the fundamentals of cooking. Eggs don't need to be at 430 degrees Fahrenheit. You're probably gonna have raw whites and your surface is gonna be burnt. So you're gonna dial down your temperatures. And it all depends on what you're cooking, and that comes with experience. So when I cook eggs, yes, I'm gonna take the pan, preheat the pan up to light and frost effect temperatures, whatever that may be. I may not even go up to 430 degrees. I might just call it at 380, 400 degrees. And then I'll dial down the temperature, add in my oil, that's the other thing I wanna talk about, my fat, and fry up my eggs. I've already made a video on eggs, for example, comparing stainless steel and carbon steel, and that video showed that eggs were happy at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and they released on their own, and both pans were extremely non-stick. Which brings me to my second point. You still have to use fat with stainless steel. And there's this like thing going on right now, no fat cooking or whatever, and I don't get it, right? I have my own issues with that, and that's another video that we can, we can make where you know fat is flavor you still need to add fat whether it's avocado oil olive oil butter whatever it is that you want in order to make stainless steel happy so it's sort of kind of lying to you to tell you that you just got to take your pan to the line of frost effect and your stainless steel pan becomes nonstick. that's simply not true that's it for me guys i hope you found this video informative and if you did please consider subscribing and joining our channel memberships so we can continue making videos like this one i'll catch you in the next video